What's up, Internet? For our last video of 2025, we're diving into our sales data of 2025 to see what was trending, what was popular, what was hot for the year that just passed. All of that might help you out if you're planning on building a PC in 2026. This is part two of going through our data. Part one was about how many parts of which brand came back to us. And if you want to know which part in a PC is most likely to fail and what brands you should avoid, check that video out, linked in the comments. But as always, whenever you buy a PC, it's a good idea to activate Windows. And you know by now, the best way to do that is through our sponsor. So waka na ba sa unactivated Windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, may CDK ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sudden depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Starting with the brains of any computer, the CPU, and here the battle is done, the king is dead, wala nang ide debate. We sold 230 CPUs this year, of which only 19 were Intel. That's a measly 8%. 92% of our CPU sales were AMD, and that is just complete domination of the market. Intel was king of the hill for the longest time, but now the crown has clearly and truly passed. In all metrics, from cost to performance to reliability, it's just really hard to recommend Intel. Parang yung only competitive advantage niya at this point is that some customers still think it's quality because that's the name they've heard over the years. Brand recognition na lang. Also, certain programs, CAD, editing, video or photo, those kind of things, supposedly perform better on Intel. But yun nga, we've sold so many AMD CPUs for so many various use cases and we haven't heard any complaints that they wish they had chosen Intel over AMD instead. I myself use a Ryzen 9 5900X for my editing rig and I have no complaints about it. So AMD is super popular for CPUs and the market has also fully transitioned to AM5. 79% of the 211 AMD CPUs we sold were AM5, but I think this trend may reverse next year as prohibitive prices will cause people to reconsider AM4. By far the most popular model of AM5 was the 9800X3D, which everyone has heard is good for gaming, and I guess our customers agree. 48 out of the 211 AMD CPUs we sold were the 9800X3D, which means we sold more 9800X3Ds than all of the AM4 units we sold combined. Or put it another way, that one AM5 CPU was more popular than all of the AM4 models we sold. Four of the 211 AMD CPUs were the top of the line, 9950X 3D. So some takers for that very expensive top tier. But overall, the 9800X 3D really appealed to people even if overall its price, around 30,000 pesos on average, you know, that's kind of on the high side. If you need to sum up the CPU market for 2025 in one sentence, it is the king is dead, long live the king. For GPUs, we sold a total of 201, of which 159 were NVIDIA, 38 were AMD, and 4 were Intel. That means 19% of our GPU sales were AMD, and that's much higher than the reported market share of AMD at 7%. So that shows hardware sugar customers are uncommon. Bira kayo and are more willing to try things outside of the mainstream. And you have a good reason to try an AMD GPU this year with their 9000 series. I am proud to report that we did not sell any 9060 XT 8GB because for just a slightly higher price, you get much higher value for money with the 16GB model. Our customers are above average in terms of knowing the market, and that's really clear in their preference for the 16GB model. On our side, when we talk to customers, we also encourage the 16GB model 
because it's just really much better bang for your buck. And that's one of the great pluses of having a computer shop you trust. When they recommend something to you that's more expensive, you know that it's for your benefit instead of that they're just upselling you. Ito talaga malinaw yung value for money. We sold 13 9060 XT 16 gigabytes and 13 9070 XTs. So that's a pretty good distribution between the top AMD card and one on the lower end of the price scale. AMD did well in our sales data, but NVIDIA is still the big gorilla. Out of 201 GPUs sold, 159 were Team Green. And of those 159, 110 were 50 series cards. Malala natin, the 50 series only launched at the start of 2025. It's a simula only with really high end models. It took a while for yung tipong 5060 Ti and 5060 to go to retail. But the 50 series quickly took over the market in 2025. So not surprising that the most expensive GPU we sold this year was a 5090. A Gigabyte 5090 Gaming OC for 164,280 pesos. Which sounds like a lot. Pero kung tinan mo yung price watch data natin, that's actually below the average price of a 5090 in December 2025. So that card is certainly keeping its value. On the NVIDIA side, for the 50 series, the brand we sold the most was Gigabyte with 33 units, followed by MSI with 20 units. Hindi ko alam paano nangyari, but we also sold two NVIDIA GT 710s this year. I have no recollection why we did such a thing because those are pretty bad cards. Well, you know, terrible for anything like gaming, which is the whole reason you buy a GPU. Except, of course, if you're into AI research, but they're also pretty bad for that. Although, if you want a more robust multi-monitor setup, instead of just the integrated graphics on the CPU, I guess that's one reason, perhaps the only reason, why you would get a GT710. Intel has continued to plug away at the GPU market with a generally positive critical response, but really the market just isn't interested. We only sold four Intel GPUs this year, and I think two of those went to the same customer. You know who you are. So despite having a solid sophomore effort with the B580, no one seems to care that Intel is selling GPUs. If you watched part one about our RMA data, you know that the MOBO is one of the most likely components in a system to fail. We sold 233 boards this year, and this next number really shocked me, of which 137, basically half, were M80X boards. For me, M80X is the bastard child of ITX and ATX that no one really knows what to do with. But in 2025, M80X really exploded in popularity. You'll see that in our case data later also. Kasi yung ITX pang enthusiast. Everyone likes to brag about their ITX build. It's for the cool kids. And then ATX is mainstream. It's the most recognizable form factor, been around forever. It's like the default. But in 2025, we had M80X, which is not small enough to be cool, not big enough to be considered default. It became our runaway bestseller, and I did not see that coming. We sold 137 M80X boards and only 62 ATX and 34 ITX. Even if you double the ATX tally, it still wouldn't reach the M80X total, which is crazy for me. Although, our most expensive boards were of course ATX. The most expensive one we sold this year was the ASUS ProArt Z890 Creator Wi-Fi at 33,240 pesos, followed closely by the Gigabyte X870e Oros Master AM5 at 29,420 pesos. Gigabyte was our best-selling motherboard brand at 106 units, followed by MSI at 76 units. Now, if you remember our RMA data from the last video, we had 10 Gigabyte boards come back this year. And if you tally that against the 106 units we sold, that would be roughly a 6% return rate. Four MSI boards came back this year, matched against the 76 units we sold, that's roughly a 5% return rate. So if you hear the absolute numbers, 10 and 4, you might think that Gigabyte is really a lot worse than MSI. But if you hear the percentages, they are just roughly of the same quality. And I had a lot of people in the comments of the RMA video getting mad at me, saying that I should have included the sales data so that the audience could see that percentage or see the data in relative terms, i.e. RMA relative to sales and not just in absolute terms, i.e. how many units returned. But the thing is, comparing the RMA data of 2025 with the sales data of 2025 would not be accurate or I think it wouldn't give a good sense of the quality of a brand 
because the majority of the broken items were not sold in 2025. These are items that were sold in 2024, 2023, a few maybe even earlier. So the period of time that concerns RMAs is a lot broader compared to the window of time for sales. So how I presented the data was deliberate. We can debate the merits of how it was presented in the comments, but how I did it was not an oversight. Sinadya ko talaga na ganon. In fact, we have a video from three years ago where I presented our total sales data versus our total RMA data. In short, I did what the audience wanted even before the audience asked for it and that was three years ago. This time though, I just wanted to focus on 2025. The best, the worst, and speaking of the worst, let's talk about RAM. Everyone has heard about the Rampocalypse, so we won't dwell on it here. 2025 was the year of DDR5, the year where people were willing to pay more to get the newest version of RAM. We sold 297 kits of RAM, of which 64% or 191 units were DDR5. First year that we saw a clear preference for DDR5. But again, maybe this trend will reverse in 2026, given how expensive RAM has gotten. Far and away, the best-selling RAM brand was G-Skill with 183 units sold, with Kingston a distant second at 74 units sold. Equally overwhelming was the size customers preferred. 191 of the units sold were 2x16. 2x32 was 38 units, followed by 2x8 with 18 units sold. The weird sizes had a few takers. 2x24 had 3 units sold, 2x48 sold 2, and 2x64 sold 1. No need to go nuts with RAM. Whether that's the size of the RAM or the speed, the vast majority of our customers opted for the very sensible 2x16 kits. In RAM, we see a very clear preference for a certain capacity. For PSUs, the distribution is a lot more even. We sold a total of 249 PSUs, with the favorite being 750 watts, with 73 units sold. But 850 watts was close behind at 68, and 650 watts also very close at 66 units sold. Then we have the outliers with 550 watts at 11 units sold, 1000 watts with 25 units sold, 1200 watts at 3, and then 1 1250 watts from MSI. Not really surprised with the data here, as I agree with the market that 750 watts is just really the sweet spot for a performance build. More than enough juice for 90, 95% of the builds out there, and you'll give yourself allowance. Let's say, biglang kailangan ng GPU ng power all of a sudden. But at the same time, you're not overpaying too much for that insurance. Most of our customers are enthusiasts, so gamers who are building performance rigs. So it's no surprise they would opt for 750 or 850 watts. It's very rare you would need anything higher, especially considering NVIDIA's 50 series GPUs are actually more power efficient while still being faster than the older models. There are so many ways to calculate what PSU you need. Manufacturer recommendations, PSU calculators, asking people online, disregarding people online, etc. But if you want to skip over all of that, 750 watts is a general good rule of thumb. Our best-selling brand was FSP at 77 units, followed by MSI with 47. I'm a little surprised we sold so few Seasonic, only 9, which in previous years, Seasonic would be one of our top brands. Although Seasonic has gotten a bit expensive in 2025, and there's a lot more competition now in the PSU space, with a lot of new names offering quality PSUs like Deepcool and Sama. And then the old names are still quality, like Corsair, MSI, Asus, Superflower, Cooler Master, etc. We are spoiled for choice in the PSU market. Lots of good choices, prices relatively stable, and even some innovations like the Corsair Shift, or PSUs with screens on them for displaying hardware information. Case data was foreshadowed already by the motherboard data, but it still surprises me that M80X is so popular. We sold 220 cases, of which half, 112, were M80X. I mean, this is the year where the Deepcool CH160 ITX case was really popular, and yet ITX had the lowest tally with just 42 cases sold. Deepcool did really well in the MATX department too with the CH260 and CH270. Montec also did well in that category. Asus had some nice models with the AP201 and A21. So for 2025, the market wanted a smaller computer footprint, but not as small as ITX and definitely smaller than ATX. 
Our best-selling brand was Deepcool with 64 cases, followed by Lian Lee with 30. We only sold 8 NZXT cases, and one of those was to my brother. NZXT was super popular during early to mid-pandemic, but these days, Lian Lee seems to be the consistently buzziest case brand, with Fractal Design being the more expensive, like, oh, ang ganda, pero medyo mahal, segment of the market, along with height. I think Thermal Take had a really interesting design approach this year. The tower models reminding me of the plastic blisters for action figures in a good way. You kind of wrap around to the sides effect to clearly display the build and medyo kakaiba din siyang tingnan. For CPU coolers, we sold 199 units of which 126 were air coolers. So may asim pa rin tong old tech na to. There's always a debate which is better, liquid cooling, air cooling. As you can see in the background, I myself prefer the simplicity of a good air cooler, and the market seems to agree. So that's 126 units. For AIOs, we sold 73 units, so around a third of our sales. Price-wise, actually, you can find relatively cheap AIOs, so it's not even a question of price anymore. It's actually a question of preference. I think there's still a tendency to think na medyo delicado yung mga AIOs because there is water involved. Paano kung mag-leak? Paano yung installation? It is a newer tech, even though relatively medyo luma na rin siya. So perhaps the market still has some questions na, you know, I just want to stick with my good old-fashioned reliable air cooler. And that's what we saw in the data. Although there is also a preconception na yung AIO pang medyo bigatin lang na CPU coolers. So if you're just getting an entry-level build, it's just easier to go with a small air cooler, one tower, one fan, compared to having to wonder paano ba ikakabit yung AIO. At this point though, it's more of a preference thing. Do you prefer the aesthetic of an AIO, which is cleaner, less bulky looking, or the perceived simplicity of an air cooler? You also get wider screens with an AIO for their CPU blocks compared to air coolers. Although even the air coolers, you do have a lot of screens now. Not just as nice and as large and as wide as the screens found on AIOs. The brand we sold the most for coolers was Deepcool with 94 units sold, followed by Arctic with 69. Both Deepcool and Arctic occupy that range in the market na, you know, good value for money and reliable products. So not really a surprise that they are our best sellers for this year. That was our 2025 in a nutshell. So very clear trends in terms of MATX, CPU coolers, DDR5. Although if I were to bring out my crystal ball, I think AM4 will be making a comeback next year because of how much RAM prices have gone up. The problem is that limited na lang ng mga models na available for AM4. So we're talking like 5600 GT. And if you're looking for performance, 5600, 5700X. I'm not sure AMD has already discontinued the 5800X 3D. But I think that would be super popular if they brought it back in 2026. AMD though is the undisputed king of the hill in terms of CPUs. They have a lot of ways to go before they can compete with NVIDIA in the GPU market. But our customers are happy to experiment with AMD for GPUs. Although kakaiba nga yung mga hardware sugar customers, they are more likely than the average customer to choose an AMD card.